Birds can fly. Why can't I fly? I, I wish I were a bird. You want to fly, do you? Well, it's simple. All we have to do is make a review with a lot of flying things. And then, can I fly? Yeah, no, really, everyone knows that. Just like Mario, from Totoro. I'm gonna be straight with you. Earthbound Immortals video, bad idea. The new energy's leaking out of me, like putting through a sieve. I've lost me legs, I'm losing me arms. I think my audio quality's degrading too. So, you need to do this right. And then you can shoot a gun or whatever it is you want to do. And what you're gonna do is black- Black like a phantom beast. This might be the end of me. What do a clan of ice wizards, an anti-alien machine army, and a bunch of military hovercrafts have in common? War crimes? Of course, but also the fact that all these archetypes are most commonly known for a few generic cards ran in meta decks due to their utility, and the rest of their cards getting cast aside as not even being good enough to use as bookmarks. And oh lordy, do mecha phantom beasts fall under this descriptor. If you've taken a glance at the meta at any point during the past year or so, chances are high you will have noticed this curious link monster, or this tuner before it was put in front of a firing squad along with every other good tuner. And even if you go a little further back, this succeeds monster is likely to have been a pain in the ass to deal with. However, as far as the archetype's meta relevancy goes, this might as well be the end of it, as comparatively, the deck being played as pure has had fewer tops than a fanboy gathering. Given that there's a couple dozen more members of this Air Force lineup, something clearly has to have gone wrong during takeoff, so let's see exactly which phalange they're missing. Before starting, it's worth noting that yes, they do in fact share part of their name with the way more ancient archetype of Phantom Beast, but don't worry, that's as far as it gets. Thank God. Mecha Phantom Beast Warble Ran is a level 1 wind machine tuner with 300 attack and defense and right away a monster of an effect. If this card is sent to the graveyard for the synchro summon of a machine type monster, special summon 1 Mecha Phantom Beast token, which is a level 3 wind machine with 0 attack and defense. Also for the rest of this turn you cannot special summon any other monsters except wind monsters. While you control a token, this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. You can tribute 1 other Mecha Phantom Beast monster, increase this card's level by 1. You can only use 1 Mecha Phantom Beast Warble Ran effect per turn and only once that turn. This is a lot to take in for the first monster, so let's dissect it real quick. The effect it shares with most other Mecha Phantom Beasts is that upon fulfilling a certain condition, you spawn a token, and while a token is present, it protects your Mecha Phantom Beast from being destroyed by battle or card effects. Nifty effects to have, although this card doesn't really make the most out of them, and neither will most of the deck, but we'll get to that later. Tuners tend to be only as good as their ability to reliably swarm the field, which Warbloran has none of. Spawning a token on Synchro Summon is good, but the limitation to Machine Synchros is annoying, even though there's plenty of decent ones in the type, and the tribute monster to raise level effect vastly overestimates the resource generation of the archetype, which again we'll get into soon enough. Unfortunately you don't have many archetypal options for tuners right now, so if you want to go into synchros, you're gonna have to pray for that one for one to be a one for all the time. I don't know. The reason why the archetype has a lack of tuners at the moment is the following. Mecha Phantom Beast All Lion is a level 2 tuner with 600 attack and 1000 defense, the usual protection which I'll stop pointing out now, and if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one token. You can only use this effect once per turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard, immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon one Mecha Phantom Beast monster from your hand. As you could assume, a level 2 tuner that leaves a body on floating is kinda pretty good. Like, wow, look at all this splash ability! Except that's not really all I am. It's this asshole. This piece of shit who cripples the entire synchro mechanic just by existing because tuners have to be overbalanced and banned accordingly due to his batshit insane summon effect. Let's be real here for a second, do we really still need this card? I think society has progressed past the need for Hulk. I think it's genuinely impressive they made a card without any negation or disruption that's this obnoxious, but it's been a while since it stopped being funny and now it just brings my piss to a boil. Olion is another unfortunate casualty of the great needle, sneedle and feedle of 2020, but during its time it was one of the deck's only playmakers. You can't play any of it right now, which leads to the deck's performance being less akin to the Wright Brothers' 12 second flight and more to a LEGO airplane crashing headfirst into a wall, so all you can do is pray it comes off the list one day. Now we're getting into the tick of it, starting with the level 3 Mecha Phantom Beast Stealth Ray. It's got 100 attack and 2100 defense, and when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, special summon a token. This card's level is increased by the total levels of all Mecha Phantom Beast tokens you control, and along with the protection effect, once per turn, you can tribute one token, then target one spell or trap card on the field, and destroy that target. Finally, we are the most comprehensive rundown of the archetype's shared effects, that being the inclusion of the mandatory level raise depending on the number of MPB tokens you control. While unique, this effect has a curious downside. 
It sucks ass. In the ideal scenario, you'd have access to a wide and varied pool of Xyz and Synchro monsters to go into with all the tokens you made, and while the tribute effects were clearly meant to wipe the field off any undesired tokens and get your levels intact, most of them are too specific to reliably trigger and you end up having a full field of worthless garbage, that is, if you even manage to summon that many. The advent of the Link era was somewhat of a saving grace, as tokens can now be linked away very easily, but it doesn't change the fact that the archetype has to bend over and break its own back to make a single rank 7, let alone a 10. Stealth Ray is a good example, as its token summon goes off when it deals battle damage, which is obviously meant to be triggered as it's attacked while face down due to its high defense, but as it's not 2005, most people will find a way to wipe a single set monster before it can do anything. The back row removal it clearly inherited from Steltroid is cute, and that's about the best thing I can say about it. <laughs> Much like Serbia shooting down a stealth fighter back in 99, you wouldn't even know it was invisible. Mecha Fanobi Sturtle Tracer is a level 3 with 500 attack and 2000 defense, and adding the level increase to the default effect lineup, the only thing it does is makes it so that each turn, the first Mecha Phantom Beast token that will be destroyed by battle is not destroyed. You think on that for a moment. Are you done thinking? Well, it's wrong, it's even worse than you thought. It's a 500 body that protects the tokens you barely make and are supposed to use for extra deck plays from being destroyed by some proverbial battle. And no, you won't be summoning it in defense position because you don't live in the anime. Next card. Mecha Phantom Beast Hamstrat has 1100 attack and 1600 defense, and when it's flipped face up, summon two tokens. You can tribute one token, then target one Mecha Phantom Beast monster in your graveyard, special summon that target. You can only use this effect once per turn. This was one of their better cards, although it's not saying much. When attacked while face down, it will make two tokens, which is higher than average all things considered, although it dies in damage calculation. If you can deal with it being face up for the tribute effect, you get a little bit of recovery, and it's nice that it works with any token so you can use simpler generators like One Time Passcode or Fiend Sanctuary. Still, the game has sped up to the point where you can't rely on this effect as much as you used to, and that's a problem when Hamstrat was already slightly outdated when it first came out. This airplane looks awfully like a hamster. Somebody built a hamster into my airplane. Mecha Phantom Beast Blue Impala is a tuner with 1400 attack and 1100 defense, and cannot be used as synchro material monster, except for the synchro summon of a machine monster. The other synchro material monsters are mecha phantom beast monsters in your hand or in your field. If your opponent controls a monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon a token. This is as versatile as their currently available tuners get, as summoning it in any way will usually net you a synchro, regardless of the fact that you probably won't get to do much after that. The floating is nice too, as it's an optional token summon that gives your other monsters something to work with, and it's not affected by the token level level raise because it doesn't really need to be. It's also an okay target to summon off of their link monster, which we'll get to in a while, but honestly, as this deck has such miserable swarming ability, you're gonna be looking at these cards in the context of how good they are to be summoned off the link anyway, so it's worth considering. Really run any number of these. Mecha Phantom Beast Arrows Gwyn is their last level 3, it's got 1600 attack and 400 defense, and its unique effect is that once per turn, you can banish one Mecha Phantom Beast monster from your graveyard except Arrows Gwyn to special summon one token. Well, it's got one thing, right? These things are definitely gonna be hanging out in the graveyard most of the time, but you'd much rather use their floating effects or actually revive them than recycle them into a token that will have less effect on the game state than normal summoning Jerry Beans Man. Their first level 4 is Mecha Phantom Beast Black Falcon. It's got 1200 attack and 1700 defense, summons a token on declaring an attack, and also you can tribute a token during either player's turn to target a monster your opponent controls and change it to face up defense position. The token spawning effect seems garbo at first, but it's actually kind of interesting since the token protects it from battle destruction as it's summoned before before damage calculation. It's slow, but so is the deck, so comparatively it gets the job done. The tribute effect would be something I'd even consider kinda cool if it flipped a monster face down, but I guess a quick Book of Moon on legs wasn't something they were ready for yet back in 2013, and to be fair it would be kind of obnoxious in 2020 as well. Black Falcon is cute but pretty out of date, so only run it if you don't mind waiting until main phase 2 to make any use out of your tokens. Mecha Phantom Beast Riten has 1500 attack and defense, and you can discard one card to special summon one token. Also, you can only use Mecha Phantom Beast monsters as materials for an Exodex summon for the rest of this turn. This card actually came out in 2017, but you could be excused for believing it was 3 years prior. Okay, to be fair, the discard to summon effect is not once per turn, it sets up the graveyard for the few of your monsters that care for that, and it's not like you'd be using anything besides Mecha Phantom Beast summon materials that turn. The lack of a tribute effect is annoying, but understandable given how accessible the tokens are. Right then is not the best thing they could've gotten after several years of radio silence, but it's a solid addition. Mecha Phantom Beast Coltwing has 1600 attack and 1500 defense, and when it's special summoned, you summon two tokens, but you must control another Mecha Phantom Beast monster to activate and resolve this effect. Also, once per turn, you can tribute two tokens to target and destroy one card your opponent controls, and if you do, banish it. It's the optimal target for the few cards in this archetype that can actually summon other members, having not only 
only a good token spawning effect, but also actual removal that gives your monster zone some breeding room, because it's not fair that you end up with two level 13 mecha phantom beats using this thing, unless you get your hands on three more level 13s and make Numeronia the chattest way possible. This is the closest thing the deck has to a combo piece, and it's even moderately splashable, so stock up on it in case you plan on extending some mecha phantom beast fields and impressing absolutely nobody. Mecha phantom beast stutter wolf has 1700 attack and 1200 defense, and when it's normal summoned, special summon a token. Once per battle, during the damage step, when this card battles an opponent's monster, you can tribute one token, and this card gains 600 attack until the end of the damage step. It's as simple as token summoning gets in this deck, so you can't afford not to run it. It's kinda sad that making a token or normal summon is one of the deck's most reasonable plays, but it is a one card link too, and you can make use of the token in different ways. The tribute effect is so bad it makes Garrett Hulk blush, but the token spawning is just that important that you kinda have to run it. This deck's entire build at us right now seems to be it's bad but you gotta play it. Mecha Phantom Beast Horrorligarlardar has 1800 attack and 800 defense, and when a monster is tributed to activate the monster effect, except discards, special summon a token. Once per turn, you can tribute a token to special summon one Mecha Phantom Beast monster from your hand. The tribute effect would be cool if the token effect wasn't lame as hell. Not only do you need to be controlling another Mecha Phantom Beast monster that will make a token in the first place, because this thing is not summoning anything on its own, but its token summon effect can legitimately fuck you over, because if you wanted to make an Xyz monster by using this, but the levels going around, were too high, getting rid of a token would not fix the situation because the token spawn is mandatory, for some reason. Run it by your own preference, cause both of these effects are theoretically fine in certain situations, but they're gonna stay a theory the majority of the time. Mecha Phantom Beast Mega Raptor has 1900 attack and 1000 defense, and when a token is special summoned to your field, summon a token. You can only use this effect once per turn. Once per turn you can tribute a token to add a Mecha Phantom Beast monster from your deck to your hand. Similar problem as Harleyard, as in it has a great tribute effect but its token summon condition is kind Kind of annoying. This one's a little better as it's the handiest way to clear a token among your main deck monsters, and the way it summons one can result in the occasional rank 10 play, if anything. I myself would not know any rank 10 monsters, but if you dig up your local yard you might just find one. Run a couple Mega Raptors. Their last level 4 is the depressingly bad Mecha Phantom Beast Saberhawk. It's got 2100 attack and 100 defense, and it cannot attack your opponent directly, and if you have a monster in your graveyard that's not a Mecha Phantom Beast, this card cannot attack at all. Once per turn you can tribute a token to target and banish one card from either player's graveyard. In addition to being absolutely mortified by the concept of attacking, as well as not having any token summoning effect to speak of, Saberhawk's most applicable utility is going to be removing your opponent's volcanic counter from the graveyard until you realize they've got two more in there and scooping on the spot. Forget this one exists. And for their last main deck monster, we jump to the level 7 Mecha Phantom Beast Kelgriffin. It's got 1000 attack and 2500 defense, and you can tribute two Mecha Phantom Beast monsters to special summon it from your hand, which you can only do once per turn, and also once per turn you can discard one Mecha Phantom Beast monster to summon a token. It's a strictly worse right then, and that's about the end of it. It's kinda sad that it doesn't have the token level increase, so you don't even get the comedy factor of having a level 16 on the field. Just think of the calculator OTKs! Finally moving on to the extra Deck, let's first cover their only Xyz monster because it's got quite a legacy behind it. Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sack has 2600 attack and 2200 defense, requires two level 7 monsters, and once per turn you can detach one Xyz material from it to summon two tokens. Along with the protection, it also lets you tribute a Mecha Phantom Beast monster once per turn to target and destroy one card on the field, but this card cannot attack the turn you activate this effect. If you're still here after that name and effect and not cowering under your bed, then congratulations, you did not have to endure the terror this card inflicted on the game 7 years ago. Surprising Yes, this is actually a Mecha Phantom Beast card, though you might have never seen a Mecha Phantom Beast player summon it, and it would be reasonable to believe it's actually a Dragon Ruler monster. For a considerable amount of time, there was no easily accessible way to get rid of this thing other than Big Eye, which was made by the same decks that were summoning Draco Zack. By 2020 standards, this is a moderately decent effect, but the immense protection it offered in addition to spot removal and token generation used to be a fear factor in 2013. You run it because it compensates for the main deck's absolute lack of, well, anything, and hope you can put it out in the field as quickly as possible. For the synchros, the first of the two is Mecha Phantom Beast Conqueruda, the Droop Snoot. Droop Snoot? The Snoot would droop. It's a generic level 7 with 2400 attack and 1200 defense, and the effect. Tokens you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card, either by battle or card effect, and sent to your graveyard, you can tribute all tokens you control, then target one level 4 or lower Mecha Phantom Beast monster in your graveyard, special summon that target. It doesn't extend your plays, but if you manage to put Rekosa 
deck out. This is a nice secondary monster. Taking all your tokens and floating to revive a single monster is really dumb, but it's not mandatory or anything. The problem is actually making the thing, as it's mostly limited to using Blue Impala with a level 4 in the hand, because the mess of tokens in the field is not gonna make it any easier, and you sure as hell aren't tuning Vorbalrand with two tokens. Run 1. The other synchro is Mecha Phantom Beast Jakul Slan, a level 9 with 2700 attack and 2000 defense, requires 1 Mecha Phantom Beast tuner and 1 or more non-tuner Mecha Phantom Beast monsters, and when this card is synchro summoned, you can tribute Mecha Phantom Beast tokens up to the number of cards in your opponent's hand, randomly discard cards from your opponent's hand equal to the number of the tributed monsters. Other Mecha Phantom Beast monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by your opponent, you can set one quick play spell directly from your deck. This one seems cool until you think about it for like 5 seconds. First of all, the summoning condition. It's a level 9 that requires exclusively Mecha Phantom Beast monsters, which means the only remotely accessible ways of summoning it are Blue Impala with two hamstrats in the hand, because I hope you're not main decking three turtle tracers just to make this thing, Impala with a Mecha Phantom Beast on the field while a token is present, or Vorbloran with two level 4s, at which point I really have to ask why you're even trying anymore. Then the hand rip effect, which will realistically only get to snipe one card at most due to the lack of tokens in the field you probably invested to summon this thing, as well as protection that's good but will most likely not put in a lot of work due to the average state of your field, and Conqueruda's protection already does a pretty similar thing. The quick play set on floating is an interesting effect, but its usage is limited to very underwhelming comeback options, including the archetype zone quick plays which we'll get to soon. Besides, I feel like waiting until a level 9 synchro blows up to search a single quick play spell might not change the outcome of the duel very much. In an archetype more competent at fulfilling its own playstyle, this would be a great card, but it's fatally limited by the deck's inability to provide a good landing zone for it. Their last official monster is the Link 3 Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. It has 2100 attack, requires 2 or more machine monsters, and if this card is Link Summoned, you can activate this effect, special summon 3 Mecha Phantom Beast tokens, also you cannot Link Summon for the rest of this turn. Once per turn, you can tribute up to 3 monsters, then apply one of these effects based on the number tributed. 1. Destroy one card on the field. 2. Special summon 1 Mecha Phantom Beast monster from your deck. Or 3. Add one trap from your graveyard to your hand. If this seems kinda good, that would be because it's from Link Reigns Pack 3, which might as well just been these three cards and it would have still sold a billion copies. The deck's best plays are rooted in the fact that this thing is super easy to summon using Deskbots and Helk, which in other decks results in a massive field setup, and in this one the occasional decent synchro, mostly cause Deskbots and Coltwing. Not to mention, along with some removal and recovery, you also get plenty of uses for your tokens. Either use the tribute effects of your main deck monsters, or pick one of the Link's abilities such as tributing two and summoning a Coltwing which will make two more tokens, and then to make token Thanksgiving and get yourself some life points. It's a good card in general, with more than enough ability to clear out any unnecessary tokens, supports the archetype in a reasonable manner, and much like you should pray your lion gets off the ban list, you should pray this one never gets on the ban list. That is, if you're a Mecha Phantom Beast player. Anyone else? I understand. There are also three, so to call them, honorary Mecha Phantom Beast monsters, those being Quack. Duck Fighter, Bellcat Fighter, and Phantom Fortress Center Blatnir. Fighter. The former two might as well not exist, as they're just really bad token based cards, and while Interblatnir is a great rank 9 that can banish a card from just about anywhere, it's completely generic, including the effect, which means Mecha Phantom Beast can use it about as much as any other deck that can make a rank 9. It has about as much relevancy to the deck as Calamities. Finally, onto their back row. Their spells consist of two quick plays, the first one being SCRAMBLE! SCRAMBLE! If your opponent's monsters on the field outnumber your non token monsters on the field, tribute any number of Mecha Phantom Beast tokens, special summon an equal number of Mecha Phantom Beast monsters from your deck. Shuffle them into the deck during the end phase. You can only activate one SCRAMBLE! SCRAMBLE! per turn. This was almost an excellent card until the activation requirement burst in to ruin all the fun. This means the card is completely dead on turn 1, and the opponent is gonna have to be controlling at least two monsters if you plan on getting anything out of it. It can be a decent playmaker from time to time, but the condition paired up with the cost makes it way too specific way too often. You can run it, but don't get hyped for it to go off frequently. The most fascinating thing about it is that it's the only card using the word out number in the effect. Uh, applause please. Nothing. Okay. Their other spell is Vertical Landing. Tribute any number of wind monsters except tokens to special summon the same number of Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. It's kind of bafflingly terrible. Aside from turning all your monsters into tokens to use for Scramble, which is already a pathetic reach, it's absolutely fucking pointless. This is more akin to a diagonal landing. That's also upside down. 
and on fire. Their first trap is Sonic Boom. Boom! During your turn, target one Mecha Phantom Beast monster on the field. This turn, its attack becomes double its original attack, and it's unaffected by other spell and trap effects. Also, if it attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage. If this effect is applied to that monster, destroy all machine type monsters you control during the end phase of this turn. Other monsters cannot attack the turn you activate this card. Thematically, it's pretty cute, but we're not making a Melfi deck here, so cuteness is not a build factor. If you want a slower and worse limiter removal, by all means, go for it. Their continuous trap is Aerial Recharge. Once per turn, you can special summon one Mecha Phantom Beast token. During each player's end phase, tribute one token or Mecha Phantom Beast monster, or send this card to the graveyard. God, they can't even get a good card without 15 caveats. Making tokens for free is good, but did this really have to be a trap and have a maintenance cost during both players' turns? This used to be a staple, but as nowadays you're gonna want to get to those tokens as soon as possible, it's heavily debatable. And their final card is the Counter Trap Dua Barrel Roll. See, I made a joke about Sonic Boom because it wasn't explicitly a video game reference, but this one tried to one-up me, so I'm not gonna give it the honor. When a spell card, trap card, or monster effect is activated, tribute all Mecha Phantom Beast tokens you control, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Why all? Were they equating the effect's power to how many tokens you need to tribute? Because it sure as hell falls in line with the rest of the archetype. It's a good effect, the cost is just so far out there that you might not get to use it very often, if ever. When your archetype has an easier time paying 4000 life points for Solemn Judgment instead of using the resource they're supposed to generate, you're doing something wrong. Grading time. Their consistency is atrocious. The only searcher they have relies on you already controlling multiple monsters, which they're bad at doing. The Link monster can summon directly from deck, which is good, but the archetype does not have an easy time making it without extensive outside help. Their power would be average if they had any notable field presence. The attack values peak at 2700, and the removal effects are limited to targeted destruction. Even though it's difficult to consistently achieve, there's technically something here. Their recovery is not non-existent, but it's limited to scramble plays, which aren't impressive enough to save you from field wipe. The protection is kinda hard to evaluate since their main gimmick is being immune to destruction while the tokens are out, which is a good form of protection, but those tokens usually aren't around long enough for it to matter. Getting to the Xyz or Link monster secures a fair bit of protection in addition to enabling your primary playstyle to work, but up until then you're scrambling, no pun intended, to summon tokens using the main deck Phantom Beasts and desperately trying to juggle them around into the desired Exodec monster. The actual protection effect itself is a solid 3, but due to its uneven application it's stuck somewhere around the 2. Finally there's the versatility, which you could make an argument for to be somewhat notable. The archetype itself doesn't have a particularly good matchup against anything, but it has produced some of the most splashable cards in history. Mecha Phantom Beast hybrid builds tend to focus on making Aurora Dawn using better swarm cards and then making the most out of the beast being summoned, such as going into big synchro or Xyz monsters. Draco Sack is still one of the best ranked 7s in the game, and the Lion was good enough to get banned. Regardless of how bad it is, there's a variety of ways to approach this deck, and it did give us generic cards that will be appreciated for a very long time. It's an archetype of 2s with the occasional outlier that's a 4, so I'm content giving this an extremely light 3. Here's a decklist that's as pure as they get, which I still wouldn't recommend playing, but I'm obligated to show. I think you're better off just running the link in decks that can make more out of it, and pretending it doesn't even belong to an archetype. What happened here? This was a legitimately interesting gimmick, put onto an archetype with a cool team and sick artwork, but then the gameplay department was so fumble it's like they were actively trying to sabotage it. The deck used to bounce between not having enough tokens on the field and having way too many with no reliable disposal method, and while the Link era somewhat circumvented the issue, the deck still has no concrete saving grace. I'm sure they're like 5 support cards away from being a decently fun swarm deck, and I'd love to see Konami take another spin at it, but they probably want to be careful with accidentally unleashing another super generic mecha a hell beast into the world. What if the key is in finding a way to incorporate Phantom Beast Rock Lizard into the mix? Uh, today I am going to be reading for you your future in these cards. I can't legally call them tarot cards uh, due to a dispute with the estate of Aleister Crowley. Uh, but here we go. So our first card is... No, oh, this is the really gross guy. He represents, you know, change. Like, change for the worse. Like when you leave something in your fridge, and then you forget about it, and then like a few months later the whole kitchen smells, you know, it changed your kitchen. And the really gross guy is gonna make a change in your life that's a lot like that. Uh, mainly the bad smells, so watch out for that. Anyway, our, our second card is Small Charles. This is a card that's really important about like the stars, and it means growth of plants. Sometimes it means that things will change, or they could stay exactly the same, or they might just be a little different. I'd only run two of these if you were playing competitively. And our last card is green. It's just green, you know, he's just there. Not, not a whole lot to say about this guy, but I am getting a clearer picture uh, from these cards. You, you look at all three of these together. If, if I had to make a guess about your immediate future, 
you're going to be accosted by a small green man. Okay, come here. 